we will continue the uh, this uh, the survey of uh, states uh, and political systems established in Central Eastern Europe in after 1989 with Hungary. Um, in the case of Hungary, uh, what needs to be noted is that um, the major change in statehood in Hungary obviously happened in 1918, right? So that's when the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was made of two entities, the Austrian part with many <coughs> provinces, and the Hungarian kingdom with many sub-provinces or at least regions and with a large population of ethnic minorities, Romanians, Slovaks, <coughs> Croats, Serbians, uh, Germans, and so on. Um, uh, so, it's in 1918, or rather 1918, 1919, that Hungary, uh, the Kingdom of Hungary, sort of the historical Kingdom of Hungary, loses two-thirds, two-thirds of its territory. Uh, and uh, the, this, uh, the borders are carved out of what looks very much like uh, today's Hungary and 1989 Hungary. Now, 19, um, the Second World War was a sort of an intermezzo, was a sort of a, um, is, was a change in a sense because uh, through, uh, by virtue of its alliance with, with, uh, with Germany, uh, Hungary uh, obtained, uh, quote unquote, back the Hungarian state, Transylvania, with, where the majority of the population was ethnic Romania. But remember, Transylvania always has been a, a multi ethnic society, so. There's no way to carve out a purely, uh, you know, uh, ethnically pure uh, Transylvania. There's no such thing. Uh, and also <coughs> southern Slovakia, which, uh, you know, again, historically has belonged to the state, the Hungarian state. Historically, right? But remember that in history, that was a statehood was not connected to nationhood, right? To uh, and with the advent of the modern uh, nations of. Uh, this idea that there are nations and nations need to have their own state and so on and they in Central Eastern Europe that they are ethnically defined suddenly the Hungarian state that historically has had more or less a stable uh, you know multi I think multicultural uh, uh, composition which didn't matter politically of course which what mattered was where you were in terms of uh, your position in society well anyway that that is torn apart just like the Austrian Empire was torn apart by these uh, by this new powerful phenomena of the of ethnic nationalism and of the building of uh, new states carved out on the principle of ethnic, ethnically defined uh, nationhood, right? So, uh, so that those borders those the, uh, were shaped as a result of the peace uh, of the Treaty of Trianon, which uh, for many Hungarians perceived uh, from their own nationalistic perspective as a, as a, as a you know, historical tragedy. Uh, one of the consequences of this carving out was that, uh, uh, again, because there's no way of drawing pure lines, well, some of the consequences of, um, of, of state borders that would match ethnic, ethnically defined nations purely, right? There's no pure nation state if you define the nation on ethnic criteria, right? Well, the consequences of, of, of uh, Trianon were uh, many were at least twofold, right? From our perspective, one they carved a much smaller state of Hungary, which is still uh, the kind of the borders are still the same, but also that is now in this shape very ethnically hom hom homogeneous, so having some minorities, but comparatively, right with, with previously when forty six percent of the population was belonged to ethnic minorities at this point, well, or at least in nineteen nineteen it was. Under probably under five percent, and now even short, sm smaller because they have been uh, 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 in, in, well, assimilated. But it also created a different thing. It has cre it created uh, so this is um, so this is Hungary more or less, right? It also, but it used to be right like this, right? Something like this, right? So you see, two thirds is gone. The state I'm talking about, right? Uh, but of course, Hungarians don't just live here. They also live here. They also live here, and they also live here. So basically, what that that, that carving out of borders, um, uh, what uh, it created was not just a homogeneous Hungary, smaller Hungarian state, ethnically homogeneous. I'm talking, but also a large population of what were now ethnic Hungarian minorities in other new states. And that's the conundrum, and it's at the heart of the. Uh, Central Eastern European uh, uh, history and, and politics, even today, right? 
We're talking about earlier in, about the Czechoslovakia becoming Czech Republic, Slovakia, why and how. Then we, the next thing that we're talking about is the breakup of Yugoslavia, right? It's all based on the same principle of this, 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 this explosive principle really, that really came about in, in world history in the 18th, 19th century that of the nation state, that there, the states need to correspond with the nation because they need to represent that nation. But how do you define that nation? Well, it's easy when you define it based on existing states like the US, Canada, France, right here, the borders have been around, whoever is inside is inside, whatever. But when, when, uh, when that's not the case, right, um, and they haven't been existing for a long time or have been changed just recently, like Poland and whatever in the 19th century, right, uh, it's the ethnic principle that becomes determinant, just like in Germany. So, but ethnic principle means that the nation is the one that speaks this language and we talked about it, right? And then you carve out a, a border. But ethnic groups have never lived separately from each other in, okay, here's this, here's that, here's the other one. That is, that, that is a fantasy. That is a fantasy. Just like the nations are a construct, not a fantasy, but that's a fantasy. Um, so, um, the problem is that applying this nation-state principle and defining the nation on ethnic on ethnic, ethnocultural uh, criteria is, is tremendously explosive in a region that is naturally, organically, uh, inter, uh, an intermingling of all the of different ethnic, cultural, religious uh, group, groups. But that is how human, humankind has existed for, forever in, in many ways. And that's, that's Africa and that's uh, Asia and so on. So we're, we're taking this abstract new uh, construct of the modern state and trying to fit the reality that is much more complex into it and what results is, is, is our clash is conflict suffering and that has been the history of the last 200 years and World War II was caused by that because Hitler's national, national socialism, Nazi, right, nationals, national socialism, national uh, socialism was sort of taking this principle up to its farthest conclusion so going beyond ethnicity to race to DNA to you know some you know because how do you really define what does it mean to be one people? It's maybe in the DNA, maybe it's uh, you know it's, it's they're all related. It's all it's a race and so on. And then you know that's the that's the big that's the that's the most important thing, and it needs its own state and it needs to live and breathe and whatever. That was that was the ideology then, right? Carving out a Lebensraum. A, a space of life. So this is why they were expanding Nazi Germany, occupying, and this is why they incorporated Austria first and so on. Because the German said it. Okay, but that's important to understand because it will shape Hungarian politics and, and, and uh, uh, up to today and its relationship with its neighbors, but also because it explains uh, several things about the Hungarian state and political system. One that it's easy then to understand why after 1989 there was nothing to do about the state. So there's no need to break it up into several parts, there's no need to make it federal because the, the, it's very homogeneous and relatively small, about 10 million people, right? Um, so homogeneous, small, and it has been like this for about 80, about 70 years at that point, okay? So the state, the Hungarian state then, will be what? Unitary. Of course, unitary, right? Because now, if it would have many minorities, if it would have all these provinces, surely it would have become something else. If it would have been the historical Hungarian state, it would have had to transform itself into a federation party, which had been broken apart and so on. You know, but luckily or unluckily, it didn't have to break it apart because it has always been already been carved. Uh, and again, the question is not right, wrong, you like it or you don't like it. You don't care about it. Uh, second thing here, so the state unitary, nothing to be changed about that. Furthermore, no possibility to change that uh, in terms of the borders of the state. A political system uh, based on, again, remember the, the, the four major factors to, that you know, uh, the, the actors had to take into account uh, when establishing uh, the, the rules by which the political systems uh, the political institutions would function, which political institutions would exist, what would be the main, uh, what would be the relationship, and the four factors again, 
where you know whatever was there in place for the existing situation, then historical legacy or tradition, right? What existed before. Uh, uh, third, models from contemporary uh, functioning democracies, mostly from Western Europe, and fourth, uh, the interaction of the political actors themselves, of the, of the major political players themselves, and the impact they had on the political system. And those you will also see in Hungary. So Hungary will have, uh, will become a, a parliamentary system. Okay. So parliamentary system, what? Well, we can, you know, ask ourselves why parliamentary system, why not something else? Um, obviously, one thing that is uh, powerful about the parliamentary system is that it removes the danger of a very strong executive. Right? Not that the, that the prime minister, right, uh, uh, is not doesn't have power to govern, but because his power depends intrinsically on the parliament, and the parliament can remove it at any time. And the parliament, the majority here, can remove the executive, uh, meaning the, par the prime minister and the cabinet, at any single moment, at any moment in time. So there's a huge check on the power of the executive. And this is why also why Germany, uh, after World War II, established a parliamentary system. And here's the second cause, right? That uh, the Hungarian uh, political culture and culture has been long affiliated with the German political uh, culture, economy. And just there is a there's a there's a and even during communism, many West German tourists would come to uh, Hungary to make, do their vacations. There's a there's a strong affiliation. There are strong bonds, especially with the southern part of Germany, with Bavaria and so on. So that's a model that is constantly there, and there's also a strategic alliance between these countries that has gone on. Um, so, um, that's, uh, that, was, that might be another explanation, because the system that they will establish will be very much resembling the, the German, the federal Germany, uh, well, meaning West Germany, the, the German system, right? In the sense that Germany has a parliamentary system with a very strong chancellor, meaning prime minister, right? Uh, and a figurehead president. And that's, that's the model that Hungary will find in Hungary. For even the electoral system, that they will implement, which we will discuss uh, later, is very similar, can be called to be closely modeled on the German electoral system. Also because, and why Germany? Not just because it's these cultural affinities and historic affinities, but also because it's a very stable and successful um, uh, country, Germany after World War II. Okay, so it's a parliamentary system, and you can see why parliamentary for all these reasons, but also the reason of you know, not wanting to have a strong executive, as I said, moving out of communism, we don't want a strong president to take the reins, and so on. So the president in Hungary is mostly a figurehead, it's mostly symbolic, has some, and through the impact, as your book, books uh, de detail it, through the impact of the specific persons occupying the functions and the political context in which they were, the president has developed some tools to, to, to kind of quietly, behind the scenes, kind of moderate the political system. But they also have established a position of presidency that is above politics, uh, outside politics. And that's the idea in a parliamentary system. The UK is a parliamentary system where the head of state right, is the monarch, uh, the, the queen today, right? And the role of the queen is this sort of a form of figurative, but also quiet sort of a advice, right? Germany has a president uh, 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 has also a parliamentary system. President in Germany is more like a moral authority, a moral figure, and again, somewhere in the background, a guarantee of that things go right. So that's kind of what the, the, the Hungarian president uh, is uh, and, and what it does. With the added bonus, so to speak, that it has some tools to refer certain uh, uh, acts um, back to, to the parliament to, to comment on them uh, and to exercise a sort of a mediating role but the role that is above politics that's my point right just like the monarch is above politics it's not part of the political battle in the uk the president in germany is not part of the political battle the essence of the parliamentary system is that the president is outside this this battle this is why it's not directly elected by the population but elected after elections by the parliament usually so that's what you will have here. The president is elected by the parliament, not by the population, because remember, whoever is elected by the parliament, the, the population has popular legitimacy and has power in the democracy. 
So the only elected, uh, directly elected institution is the parliament, right? It's a unicameral uh, uh, parliament, uh, national assembly. Well, it's called, you know, the house of the country, so to, is, is, uh, is, uh, is actually the, the literal translation, but let's call it national assembly. Uh, and so the National Assembly is the only one that is elected directly by the population, it's about 400 of them, uh, 300 and something, uh, uh, leaning towards 400, and it's after each election, the majority coalition nominates and elects the Prime Minister. So in, in, for all intents and purposes, the leader of the larger party in the coalition, you expect him or her to become Prime Minister, who then appoints he is uh, the members of the cabinet, and that's typical for a, for a, for a parliamentary system. That's how it works, and also typical for a parliamentary system, UK, Germany, or Hungary, is that by today the prime minister has become the most powerful or most and most efficient, most uh, active, most important political uh, in institution or actor in the system, in the sense of who makes policy. The, the Prime Minister is the leader that directs the direction of the country. But again, his power, his support, depends on this support in the Parliament. If one of the parties leaves again, right, once you don't have a majority here, the, the government falls. Now, just like in Germany, and just like as I mentioned in the Czech Republic, the way to remove the President here is not simply through a simple vote of no confidence, in which case any change of majority can lead uh, leads to the uh, crumbling of the executive and change of executive, but through a constructive vote of no confidence, just like in Germany, which means that, as I mentioned, uh, the parliament or a majority of that deputies in the parliament can only remove the, the executive, can only remove the prime minister and the cabinet if uh, they already have another one to vote in. And uh, prime ministers have resigned or have died in office, and the system, as their book, uh, as their book describes, has proven to be very stable. Uh, very stable, so that's very good. Uh, Hungary is a multi party system, so there are many parties, so you always have coalitions in power. And the fact that the system is, has been stable with a multi party system is you know, a plus uh, point. So, right now, we have this. We have, unlike in, here's the thing. We talked about the fact that the Czech Republic is this strange thing that started as a parliamentary system and it has been constantly moving towards a sort of a semi-presidential. And a, a, more, more, a very, quite a decisive move, move was a couple of years ago when they have changed the election of the president from uh, being elected by the two houses of the parliament in the Czech Republic to being elected by the population. Well, here it hasn't changed. It has remained a parliamentary system. But it's funny that, um, you know, at the beginning when, when the system was designed, there was a the reason, or another reason why it's a parliamentary system is because there was no Václav Hav, there was no Lech Walesa, there was no one opposition leader that would put his major imprint on the political system, on politics after 1989. What you had in Hungary was in fact the existence of several uh, politically uh, opposition movements, as you read, right, the MDF, which is the Hungarian Democratic Forum, the SDS, the uh, alliance of Free Democrats, uh, the Fides, which is the Alliance of Young Democrats, uh, or uh, yes, uh, so these were the three big ones and other smaller ones. But even among the big opposition groups, there were at least three, if not more. So you see, this is a, uh, this is a system in which none of you know you don't have an imprint of a powerful person like Balesa on the presidency there, creating a semi-presidential system in Poland, or Havel kind of creating a parliamentary system where the president is more powerful, kind of leaning towards semi-presidential here, no. And in fact, uh, when uh, it was it was a negotiation uh, at the, in the early 90s between the import some of the important actors there, mostly between the leader of the Hungarian Democratic Forum, uh, Jozsa Fantal, who also became prime minister, and the pre president, who was from a different political group. So here's what, that's my point: that when the system was set up and the, in, in its first instantiation, the major opposition groups kind of divided the responsibilities, and it was a period of peace and understanding because the opposition, just like in the Poland and Czech Republic, has swept out the communists and completely took over the government. 
So both in Poland and Czech Republic, Hungary, you have this sort of a major pendulum swing, right? And after 1989, out of the communist opposition comes in. Now, what will happen in all three countries is that this opposition that was granted by one major thing, opposition to communists, will then crumble itself in different fractions because, you know, we're all against, uh, you know, uh, whatever, sharks, <laughs> you know, whatever. We're all against something bad. You know, we, have, we are united by this common threat, which is very powerful, but in all other issues we, dif we differ. Right? So it's easy to be united against a common enemy, but then when you talk about, okay, but besides that, what, where do you want to go? That's where paths differ, right? So that's what happens in all, all three countries. The former opposition that managed to remove the, the, the communists in 89 then crumbles apart. That also happens here. But from the beginning, you have three major opposition groups and they divide the position. So one of them gets the prime ministership, the other one gets the presidency, more like a, okay, we want the election here, because that's, that's what happened. So they want the election here, two of these opposition groups, three, and the, the fourth one, which was major, the, the Alliance of Young Democrats, was not in the government, but because there was a period of consensus, these people who won the election and did something they didn't have to do, offered the presidency to the leader, one of the, well, one of the more uh, outstanding persons within this fourth opposition group, which did not win the election, in the first election, right? So you see that, um, so it's not the most powerful figure who occupies this position, like in the Czech Republic, and which will shape it into a more powerful presidency. No, it's going to be something formal, something I'm doing to kind of, I'm, you know, reaching out, so to speak, to the, to the other opposition group and granting them something. Okay. So that shapes a lot, and from the beginning, this, the, ones who, the, the ones who occupy the position of Prime Minister have been power, strong, relatively strong personalities. And, and there was a some of tug of war of maybe we should move more towards that and towards semi-presidential or not, but it was clear that politically the situation was that here's where the winners were, right? And this was more just granted to, a, to the fourth uh, political group. Long story short, this is a parliamentary system. It is a true, pure parliamentary system, okay? Like there is in Germany, like there is in the UK has no semi-presidential features, the president has some tools to check and whatever, but it's still basically the president is head of state, signs things and so on, represents Hungary more formally, morally, uh, while the prime minister is the true head of executive or head of government, uh, shapes policy, makes policy, uh, and then because he uh, or she has the majority, usually parliament will go along with uh, passing these laws because, well, it's their government, right? It's their leaders who are here. Okay, um, the president is elected by a two-third majority of the parliament. That's the next thing that I wanted to mention. So yes, so Hungary, uh, a pure parliamentary system, very stable, uh, not extending the many changes of you know who won the election since then, but that we will examine uh, in a different section. Uh, and uh, the fourth and last uh, explanation of the case study. Um, of uh, examination, rather, of state and political system, the fourth and last uh, case study in this section, right, of how uh, states and political systems are, uh, which types were set up after 1989, will be uh, Romanian. Uh, and that uh, will be posted uh, next.